What's going on guys? Uh, just wanted to go ahead and uh, jump into this video, but before I do, uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on myself. Uh, so I actually work in the employee benefits industry. Uh, I design and implement uh, and administer benefit programs for large and small corporations. Uh, but within my firm, we also have uh, a wealth management <clears throat> and finance arm. So what that means is a lot of times when I go into clients, uh, I have my counterpart, the other vice president who manages, you know, uh, money market accounts, uh, retirement plans and all those things. Uh, we end up working together a lot uh, when we go to see groups um, or just in general. So over the last year or so, I've been doing a lot of research into the market uh, every day. I usually spend about four or five hours after work just reading straight, um, you know, stock news, data, um, anything I can find realistically. And uh, so what I want to kind of do with the channel is to create videos that are, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes long that do a little bit of a deeper dive on some of these stocks that you might not have the time to go ahead and research. Uh, you could just throw this on in the background and kind of listen and uh, get you know some details about the stock some of the financials some of the things that i think about it um, but another thing that i want to go ahead and get out of the way is i am not a financial professional just you know do not buy based on a youtuber's recommendation um, you know whether they have experience or not you should always be doing your own research so my goal here is to give you uh, deep dive research data some of the thoughts that i have about it um, and I will let you know if I'm in a position uh, within this particular stock or not. Some of the videos I will be, some of them I won't be. Uh, but what I find on YouTube is usually what they, uh, what these YouTubers do is they're either getting paid um, by a company to promote a stock or um, they have a big position in said stock. So they're usually using the platform to kind of drum up interest in the stock that they're in. Um, so for me on this particular stock, I have a very small position. Um, you know, it's less than a thousand dollars. So very small position. Uh, and the reason for that is I, you know, I'm not totally loving this stock. Um, but at the same time, I think there's a chance to play the reopening momentum. Um, and all the other airline stocks, if you've been watching them are like way overvalued. And even the ones that you know, have come down a little bit are still, you know, trading at crazy multiples. So um, let's go ahead and look a little bit deeper into this. Um, I want to pull up my notes here on the side just so I have them. I took some notes while I was going through. So as you can see right here, um, it closed on Friday at eighteen eighty five per share, eighteen dollars and eighty five cents. Um, the IPO range last week it actually just IPO'd last week and the share price range that they had was between 19 and 21 dollars I think it ended up opening at 19 dollars flat uh, so it ended up you know basically where it opened a couple cents down I snagged some um, I think I got in you know like 1875 1890 somewhere around there so um, basically flat but my uh, my video today is going to tell you some of the good and the bad things and what and then at the end I'll kind of tell you why I think it's a good swing play so um, as I mentioned IPO last week um, so one of the things again that has been happening in the market is you're starting to see um, some rotation into these value names and these reopening plays so airlines have really been bid up pretty high uh, my personal favorite uh, which i don't own right now only because i think it's overpriced now uh, and they had baked in all the uh you know for they baked in all the good news essentially and uh, bid the price up on southwest so i ended up selling it um, but every airline stock that you look at is you know obviously They've been outsized with the correction that they got compared to other industries um, for good reason, because they were basically shut down entirely for almost a year, if not longer. Um, so what I try to look at within this sector is I try to separate the uh, ultra low cost budget carriers that fly mostly domestic and get most of their revenue from a domestic airline path, um, as opposed to some of the bigger ones 
um, like Delta or United or, you know, American, where they're flying a lot of international routes and they have a long path to go with that. With that. Um, international flights are going to, you know, they're projecting that they're not going to be back to pre-pandemic levels for like two, three years. Um, so that's definitely going to hurt and it's going to weigh on uh, those bigger airlines. But for these smaller, low cost budget airlines, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to be looking for affordable. They're going to be looking for domestic um, and, you know, Frontier fits that bill. And actually among the budget carriers, it, it was actually uh, in 2019. Uh, I, I'm not going to use 2020 data for the airlines because they got destroyed. And I'll, I'll tell you about the debt levels, but they just, you know, for obvious reasons, um, the pandemic weighed on them. So anyway, um, they are the lowest cost carrier from a cost standpoint for the consumer uh, of the budget carriers. So you got your Spirit Airlines, Frontier, um, Allegiant, and uh, JetBlue. And then, <coughs> excuse me, to a lesser extent, um, you have Southwest, which I said, you know, before I liked that one. It flies mostly domestic. It, I think it was the only airline that um, actually picked up market share throughout the pandemic. Because what happened is they have a they ha they went into the pandemic with a really strong balance sheet. So while every airline was burning stop, uh, burning cash somewhere between two to thirty million, depending on which carrier uh, per day, which is insane. Um, Southwest, Frontier, Spirit, Allegiant, you know, they're a little bit lower cost um, and they have little, little bit smaller uh, operations. So it's easier for them to kind of cut costs and, um, and then quickly pivot as demand, you know, picks up again, as opposed to the bigger carriers that, you know, these huge big entities with things already in place and, you know, tons of employees and tons of operations. And it's just not as easy uh, to kind of, you know, pivot. So um let's go back to frontier and let's talk about some of the advantages that they have um, over the competitors so uh, again i just mentioned they're they fly a lot of domestic routes they're an ultra low cost carrier you'll notice that their ticker actually is ulcc that's ultra lost ultra low cost carrier um, which is what they operate as so uh, that's something to keep in mind uh, I have written down, I already talked about this, the Southwest uh, situation, um, but Frontier operates 110 airports, their top five locations um, as far as departure traffic. So these are their big money makers, Denver, Orlando, Vegas, Las Vegas, Philly, and Phoenix. Um, the market share for Frontier is 3.3%. So that's really small uh, compared to some of the other ones. Uh, but I, I can see that changing a bit. I can see that growing um, as they take some, you know, uh, market share from some of the bigger carriers that are kind of reeling right now and pulling back. Uh, they are able to kind of uh, take advantage of that and jump in and uh, acquire new customers at a lower cost. So that's something to keep in mind. It is a small market share, but it's obviously priced, you know, pretty low as well. Um, modern fleet with a four-year average age so that means that they have you know new planes very young fleet should last for a long time um, something that you should look at when you look at you know any airline stock is how old their fleet is because that can help you calculate some of the future costs that might be related to you know acquisition of new jets um, and things like that um, one of the other things that's really good about Frontier in keeping up with the ultra low cost carrier is that they also um, have the best fuel efficiency out of any carrier in the airline sector. So that's something to be mindful of because um, jet fuel prices make up really large portion of their expenses. Um, I think for Frontier, it makes up 25 or 30 percent of their expenses. So um, they're able to keep that low. Uh, which obviously helps them keep their fares low, and then they can pass that on, uh, those savings on to the consumer. So that's definitely something to keep in mind too. Um, keeping up with uh, the savings pattern, 70% of their bookings are 
through their website or one of their apps or um, you know another channel that they directly are controlling so that means that they have a low marketing uh, budget expense so um, that's a good thing and a bad thing it's a good thing because they're not spending money on marketing but it's also a bad thing because you might be able to capture more of a client base if you were spending marketing dollars so um, that one I'm kind of iffy on I'm not sure if that's an advantage or a disadvantage but wanted to put that in there for you guys um, the other thing to keep in mind is when you're looking at these airlines um, again they were burning cash somewhere between two to thirty million dollars a day depending on the carrier so um, all the airlines had bad financials in 2020 so if we look back at the last four or five um, you're gonna see they all had you know heavily negative earnings per share PD ratios don't even exist at this point for a lot of them um, and you know they're losing money fast but uh, one of the encouraging things that I've heard uh, listening um, not only to Frontier and other airline earnings calls um, in other industries such as I'll give you an example uh, Caesars Entertainment uh, they said that their bookings for their hotel resort casino uh, are actually approaching pre pre pandemic levels so that tells me that people as soon as we're able to get back out there I think there's going to be a ton of demand for airline services uh, travel things along those lines so i think that 2020 obviously is a really big black eye but i think frontier is actually coming into the market at a great time because all these share prices of the again i'm just repeating this but all the share prices of all the other airlines are fully valued um, if not overvalued now um, so people aren't going to be jumping into those but with this one you have a you know a more uh, palatable uh, share price for people to jump into and you know less risk downside you know it's very low cost um, you put a stop loss on it if you're really concerned about it um, but uh, you know again it's just a good play and I think that there's going to be momentum that pushes this you know into the 20s and uh, you know possibly beyond but right now what I'm looking at it for is a swing trade so if it hits 23 24 dollars I'm in at 1870 you know I might look to sell there and so that's what I was talking about in the beginning uh, a swing play not necessarily a long-term hold unless it starts looking like we're getting some volume in there the trend is going up and their first earnings report will be you know as a public company uh, will be closely watched to see how the recovery is really doing and um, one of the other things that happens in the market is called sympathy. So what that means is if it, the peer group is doing well or reporting good earnings, that means that you're likely to get a little bit of a tailwind as another airline. Um, so for example, if Southwest comes out next month or two months from now, whenever they report uh, and they have earnings and their earnings come out and you see you know, revenues back up or um, demand is starting to climb back up or uh, capacity is starting to fill back up that could also send frontier um, you know up a little bit as well because people are assuming if the you know if one airlines you know starting to turn the corner that that probably means the rest of the industry should be starting to turn a corner so that's something to keep in mind as well um, I wanted to hop over to um, their operating revenue so this is what I was looking at pre-2020. Um, again, 2020 was a crazy year. Um, there's not much you can do when your entire fleet is shut down. So I don't think it's ne necessarily fair to, um, you know, look at that 2020 number and be like, oh, you know, this is crazy. Um, they must have, you know, changed operations and, you know, they were really poor or ill-prepared for this situation, blah, blah. Nobody saw this coming. All the airlines got hit. Everybody's 2020 looks bad in the airline sector. So I encourage you to go back and look at it just so you know what you're dealing with. But at the same time, remember, um, relative to its peers, it's, you know, it's kind of in the same ballpark. So this is what I wanted to look at um, pre-pandemic. So if you look uh, back in 2004, they were, you know, pulling in $787 million in revenue. And you can see that number has slowly climbed to, in 2019, an all-time high, $2.5 um, trillion 
or uh, so, excuse me, two and a half billion dollars in revenue. Um, they also were profitable in 2019. So uh, 2020, they obviously were not, but the year before the pandemic, they were profitable. Um, another thing to keep in mind, as I'm giving you some good news, they filed or were close to filing for bankruptcy all the way back in 2007. So um, they do have a little bit of a rocky past. So that's why I tell you, um, you know, don't just go off a of YouTuber's word. Make sure that you're going in there and doing your own research. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys that because I thought it was a good picture of where they were pre-pandemic. Uh, so um, that's that's that. And then, um, you know, I had that written down there. But I, the other thing that I was talking about before is that you got to look at the airline's debt, too. So um, they have a really high debt ratio, 91%. Uh, debt, debt leverage, um, debt leveraged debt ratio. Sorry about that. So um, that's pretty high in comparison to their peers. I think it's about in the middle uh, for the lower cost segment. Um, I think I think it's United, either United or Delta. One of them is uh, you know 100% leveraged. Their debt ratio is like over 100. So uh, definitely look at those and you know make sure you're keeping an eye on that. However, remember that the government was, you know, providing low cost debt uh, and low cost financing um, throughout the pandemic as well. So if things open up and they start to, you know, hitting, you know, they start hitting their gears and start moving in the right direction and start making some money, um, they can pay some of that debt down. And I, I assume that will be uh, priority number one for a lot of the airlines over the next few years. So that's definitely something to have on your radar as well. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, another downside or an upside, uh, is that they are the smallest airline in the um, ultra low cost sector. So again, I mentioned it before, but that's like Spirit, Allegiant, and then Frontier. Um, so they are the smallest. That's a good thing and a bad thing in my opinion. It's a good thing because it's easier for them to, you know, like I said, pivot and, you know, r kind of What's the word I'm looking for here? Kind of, um, you know, jump and move in a different direction quicker than some of the bigger airlines, um, you know, that have already have things in place. Um, so I think it could be an up, or, you know, a positive or a negative. But wanted to throw that one out there for you guys too. Um, and then here, this is another really important one in my opinion. So this I think bodes well for the future of this stock. They're the highest income margin. Um, carrier of all the low cost carriers. So um, for every dollar that they bring in, they have the highest margin compared to Spirit or Allegiant. Uh, so that, you know, that's a good thing as demand picks up, you know, they have high margin um, ability there. So that's definitely one thing that I can see uh, definitely being a key part of the turnaround. As long as, uh, you know, traffic does pick up like they're expecting it to, uh, this could be a good thing for them so not uh not too shabby in that department that's one of their stronger suits um, again last uh last closing piece here i just wanted to say that uh, swing trade candidate for me so i bought it under 19 dollars. what i'm looking to do is play the momentum in the airline space or in value sector um, you know there's a lot of excitement around the reopening the vaccinations um, a lot of reports coming out that the economy is going to perform better than expected. Uh, earnings are going to be crushing. Uh, a lot of good things going on as far as, um, you know, recovery plays or rebound stocks. So um, all in all, I think it's, uh, I would give this stock, you know, like a neutral rating. I think it's, like I said, an opportunity for a swing play. I don't know if I love it long. Um but, you know, there is potential there. Uh, it, it's a smaller airline, so it does have more room to grow. Um, maybe there's some opportunity to uh, make some acquisitions, pick up some extra business, um, take some market share. And if that happens, uh, you know, then they have a lot more room to run. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. And if you liked it, please, uh, you know, I'm going to say the annoying thing, but if you liked it, please 
like the video and uh, subscribe and you can get the videos delivered straight to your inbox you know, get a notification uh, and I'm gonna try to do uh, you know one to two maybe three stocks per week um, and we're gonna be doing a lot of different industries a lot of different sectors uh, some that I own some that I don't I think my next one might be on uh, Caesars Entertainment but what I would, what I did want to say lastly is if you do have a stock that you're interested in and you'd like a little bit more of a deep dive and some of the news and uh, things like that around the stock then uh, please drop it in the comments and I'll uh, I'll make a video on it um, and we'll go from there all right guys um, I will see you next week with a new video and good luck